Hopefully everybody's having a good day wherever you are. Um, so today's video is going to be a sample slash demo of the new brush that I was sent by um, this particular company. And um, I wanted to kind of test it out, sample it and see how well it works. We're going to try with a bunch of different acrylic powders. Um, we are going to use it with some colored acrylic, some uh, clear acrylic, different brands of acrylic, because I kind of want to play around with the brush because um, they actually want to um, provide me a few brushes to give to my subscribers um, but I want to make sure that this is a good quality brush before I decide to say hey send me over a few maybe send me 10 and I can see if they are interested hello hello hi Melanie hi Patricia so that's what I am going to do today is play around with this brush and I am going to use my mat today Hello, loser. How are you? So I'm going to play around with my mat today. Um, this is actually a mat that I actually got while I was in nail school. So it allows you to practice on your shaping. You have this um, portion over here to practice some pretty flowers or whatever it is that you want to practice. Um, you can practice pick, picking up some beads, making a circle, you know, things like that. So I have the stiletto coffin. And you have the almond oval, uh, squared oval, and square. So yeah, so I figured I would just play around with it. I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. Hanging in there. So that's what we are going to use today. So I'm going to use some Glam and Glitz, which is my light pink acrylic powder. I'm going to use some clear acrylic powder. I'm doing well, Rhonda. How are you? Uh, so I have my dappin' dish. I don't know. Maybe I'll try to practice some 3D petals. Just to practice. So let's do that. And I'm going to get some colored acrylic. Mm, what colors should we try? I think I'm going to do one from Not Polish and one from B&D. What colors are you guys feeling? Hi, Laura. The weather started to break here in uh, Illinois. So it's like 60 degrees today, but I you I was outside with my my uh, winter jacket on. I had my Michael Kors on. <laughs> and the ammonia ain't finna catch me because I think it's supposed to go down to 45 degrees tomorrow. So still put a jacket on. What colors do I have? Oh man. Here, let me take this off the stand. Um, so here are most of the color acrylic powders that I have. And I have some glow and dark acrylic powders, have some nude. So I got blue and yellow. So blue. All right, let's do there was two yellows. Uh, let's practice with this blue. And a loser said a green. So let's grab that. And one more from d, d Magenta. Let's try this one. Let's do that one. Shall we? All right. So we got four. I want to try those out with this brush. And we are going to try out one of my glitter acrylic powders, whichever one you guys want to do. We're actually going to use the ones that we've created. So I have those. I mean, I know you can't really see them, but I want to use one of those. But actually, hold on real quick. You guys will be able to see them because they're right here. So we have H2O, Honeydew, 
Millionaire, Blue Ivy, Be Beautiful, Chill Out, we have You Got Flagged, Candy Girl, Oh Toodles, Luau, Lucky Charm, Lemonade Lush, Crush on You, Hubby's Masterpiece, <laughs> uh, Biscuit Bay, uh, what is this one? Sun Kiss. We have Swipe Right, Fish Flakes, Northern Lights, is that one, Gold Slick, Purple Haze, Dozen Roses, Stepping on their Neck, Don't Touch My Fruity Pebbles. <laughs> Vacation Blues, Peach Mango Kiss, Forget Me Not, Beneath the Stars, Eternity of Hearts, Buzz Lightyear, and Fairy Claw Mother. So... <laughs> We have all of these to choose from. So we got a lot of honeydew vacation blues, green apple fizz. What was that one? Oh, that was one that I gave away. Because <laughs> I was like, I did not say that one. That was one that was in a giveaway. And I gave that one away to one of you guys. So I remember, I do remember that one. But I'm like, I did not say that. We need to make that one again. <laughs> I'm surprised you remember that, Bianca. <laughs> uh, honeydew, honeydew. Um, okay, so that was two honeydews. Um, hello hello i know i'm almost to 7k who knew uh, thanks to you guys i wouldn't be anywhere without you guys so let's do honeydew and somebody said northern lights let's do that one we haven't done that one so Northern Lights. All right. Hello, Nails by Sue. Okay. So, we did those just because I'm going to do a little sample. All right. And look, I actually get glitter on the mat. So, let me wipe that off. Real quick. I remember because I named it. <laughs> well, that would explain it. I was like, wait a minute. I don't remember having saying that name just now. But that one was a good one. I love anything that has green apple. Okay. All right, so we got our selections. So this company reached out to me and sent me a number 14 Kalinsky brush. Um, so I actually just got it in the mail today. And... Um, I wanted to try it out for you guys now normally i use a size 10 or 12 brush when i'm doing my acrylic sets but i also use a size 20 as well um especially when i'm trying to do one ball methods so um yeah so i use all different sizes of brushes now don't get discouraged if you see hello sarah um, so, um, yes, Melanie, I do know where you can get it. So this company asked me, it is not crimped. So 
this company reached out to me and asked me to um, test out their brush because they were interested in sending me about 15 brushes to give um, to my subscribers. But I told them that um, I don't want I don't want it right now because I want to be able to test out this brush before I recommend it to anyone because um, I don't want to tell you guys something is a good brush and it's really not. So with that being said, I asked for a size 14 um, because I also wanted to step out of my comfort zone with using with using a size uh, 10 because this is a size 10 and this one is crimped. And then this is the same brush in a size 10, but this one is not because I didn't ask them to crimp this one. So it's, um, you know, it different strokes for different folks. Some people like working with crimp brushes. Other people don't. Some people like to crimp the brush, the, uh, their brushes the, themselves. So that's why I asked for them to, to send it to me uncrimped. So, um, but yeah, so this is my size 20 that I use. And again, this one is not crimped. So it's all based on preference. So that's why I said, please send me a brush um, that is uncrimped because I want to be able to test it out for myself, use it for myself, work with it. Plus, if you send it to me and then I end up saying, oh, I like it, send me some. Um, that way I can, you know, share with you guys then you guys can crimp the brushes yourselves. It's real easy to crimp brushes. All you have to do is um, get a pair of pliers or um, you can um, get like a piece of cloth. So get the, the, the uh, pliers and the cloth and then you just basically wrap it around your brush. Make sure you get your brush to a point where you're going to use it, like in your hand. And then you just basically use the pliers to crimp it, which is basically going to flatten and shape your brush. So that's the reason why I didn't want this crimped because there's some people out there that use it uncrimped and some people that use it crimped. So this is a size 14. Again, like I said, I've used 10s. I've used, um, I've used 12s and I have used the 20. So I haven't used the 14, so we'll see how this feels. Um, actually, it feels really good in the hand. It's light for sure. You would think that um, this brush in particular would be heavy, but it's definitely light. So, and compared to this brush, it's actually lighter. It's actually lighter than my brush that I use here. But again, um, my brush is a little bit longer and it seems like it's made out of a different wood so you know it's all about quality um definitely a chic looking brush for sure so and i like i said wood handles sometimes they get a little messed up based on the monomer you can always wrap your handle i don't because as a nail tech you're always going to go through brushes so to me it doesn't matter but if that's your thing please do that so that way you will preserve the life of your brush but I haven't had a brush that I've been using for forever because I mean as a nail tech you should have backup brushes just like I do so I have multiple brushes that I use but yes yeah, so ultimately they reached out to me asked me to use the brush and then they would send me um, a few brushes um, which I said okay so let's go ahead and test this bad boy out um, so when you get your brushes, you should definitely, it's going to be hard, but I've been sitting here playing around with the brush. You want to go ahead and flick it back and forth so that way you can get any of the glue or resin that it was. Um, is it affordable? Um, so this brush that they sent me, um, I don't know the cost of what it was. So they told me they want me to review it and then um, they will actually let me purchase the brushes and then I would sell it to you guys so um, is it affordable I'm going to make it affordable because obviously we're all on a budget you know we have things that we need to do get you know 
who knows what's going on in our lifestyle so the brush will definitely be affordable so I'm just flicking the residue slash glue out of the brush you can see some of it still in there but the um, bristles feel nice the brush feels nice the hairs feel nice nice and soft and soft and smooth that's for sure so looks like it's all good and trust me if this is a, this turns out being a bad brush you guys won't see it at all so <laughs> um, but other than that like I said it's light nice for doing handwork so I just want to see how it picks up the beads how it retains water and liquid um, obviously what it looks like uh, that's why I'm not wearing any gloves because if I do get monomer on my hands I want to know if it does tear up the handle but again it's probably going to tear up the handle so you know things like that um, will you sell your brush the same place that you sell your acrylics yes yes ma'am or depending on how many they send me i may only have a handful until i place an order so um we shall see but yes that is the plan if not i will give you guys first dibs here on youtube and then go to my instagram so what i'm doing right now is um cleaning the brush so i'm trying to get rid of all the residue and resin in the brush so I dipped it in there. I'm going to pull it down. So the bristles look great. So right now I'm shaping my brush. And the reason I know I'm shaping my brush is because when I lay the acrylic, this is the way that my bead will form. So when I'm pushing the bead, it shapes to all sizes of the nail. So it fits perfect actually this isn't a bad size so i'm just pressing it down to release any of that air from the brush and again i'm going to clean it again this is normally what i do when i get any new brush as it is yes 100 percent kalinsky the bristles look great hello hello you look good to me all right so now that we have that again this brush is so light that it actually can um, stay inside of the holder the dappin dish so we're all good there um so let's see what do we want to try first <laughs> let's do my glamming glitz which this one is my light pink acrylic powder i haven't used this in a long time so um basically i got a new brush today and i'm just going to be demoing it out because the company reached out to me um asking for me to sample it and then they would send me some brushes for me to uh sell to you guys so i want to test it out before i even say yes or no yay or nay because no company is going to make me um get a brush that isn't worth it so that's why i'm testing it out here so yeah all right, so I'm going to look at how it forms to the, the dappin dish. I like that. Back into a point if you choose. Look at that. Shape's great. Uh, where from so obviously it was a Chinese based company because they saw my YouTube videos um, So I just know it comes from China. That's all I can say where it came from. I don't I Don't know like if they they're probably like a wholesale company that reached out to me so I said that's perfectly fine So they want me to purchase the brushes so 
we should see. All right. So let's talk about this bead pickup here. All right. There's one bead. Obviously, this would be a small bead. So let's go ahead and lay that there. You guys want me to zoom in a little bit? There we go. I'll pull it down some. So that way you guys can see. Okay. So that was a small bead. I'm tapping it twice for a medium sized bead. pickup is great definitely retains the liquid one two three there we go and it keeps it on one side So here, obviously my hand was in the way. One, two, three, four, five. Look at that bead pickup. Mm. All right. Yes. Okay. I should have still found my uh, practice sheet for when I was in school. I probably still have it somewhere around here. It is looking good. I'm I'm impressed for now. One, two, three, four, five, six. It is. Keeps this nice shape. Okay, so I'm down for that. So I'm going to get some color. Let's do this not polish, which is Ocean Days. And let's open up the not polish New York City. The brush feels very light. Like I said, this is... I don't know, it's probably the lightest brush I think I've had to work with so far. It feels great in the hand, very light. All right, make sure these are in focus. Hello, hello. Thank you, yes, I can't wait for that chair to be complete. Two, three, four. Uh, somebody said, can you do, hold on, I'm waiting for it to come up. Can you do a little ombre with the blue and the yellow? Sure. Let me just check the consistency of the yellow with the brush. Because it's picking up acrylic very nicely. And always make sure to wipe your brush. here 
I just want to mix it real quick. So it's good for picking up two beads of acrylic. Okay. So let's go over to a practice. Let's do these coffin nails. So this is like a little practice sheet that I got from my nail school. It'll help you out with laying your balls of acrylic and creating a nail. That's why I wanted to purchase it. No, the acrylic is not sticking to the brush at all. Yes, they want to sell me their brushes. So I would purchase them and then sell them to you guys. But, like I said, I don't want to put my name on anything that I feel isn't the truth. Like, if it's not going to benefit or help us learn and work with nails and do nails better, then no thank you. <laughs> Sorry, that's just how I am. Um, so actually I was sent the brush so um, they want to sell me brushes it was a Chinese based company that reached out to me wanting to sell me um, a lot of brushes because they see that I do nails on YouTube so they wanted to allow me to sell them to you guys and obviously you know to get their brand a brush out there um, for you guys to use and for me to use. So I said, okay, I will um, send me your brush. I'll sample it. Um, what I'm doing is getting some Mia Secret cover beige. So I told them that I would review the brush, play around with the brush, see how I like the brush first before I decided to, you know, put my name on it and say, oh yeah, this brush is great. Because if you guys get the brush and don't like the brush, and the brush doesn't do nothing then what are you guys gonna do you're gonna come back to me and be like hey biscuit i i thought you said and i'm gonna be like well you know i really didn't test out the brush but you know they just asked me to that wouldn't be right so what i did is i said you gotta send me the brush first because i'm not going to purchase it and i feel like the brush is no good but look at that bead pickup And you can still drain it if you wanted to.
So you could do something like that. You know, this is a nice practice mat um, that they sell for you to be able to practice your shapes. do is use some of this clear to encapsulate that real quick picks up the clear very nicely and it's not on the other side of the brush Uh, I'm not sure if they do sell this brush on Amazon. I haven't actually looked for a brush because, like I said, I wasn't really in the market to get a brush yet. But it could be on Amazon. Hello? But like I said, it it feels great. And I haven't got any um, monomer on the brush. Like my hands haven't been wet. So. Oh, you meant the practice mat? Yes, the practice mat is on Amazon. I had purchased this from my school when I went to nail, uh, nail tech school. So, but yes, I have seen this on Amazon. I think it's like 20 bucks. Um, so I'm not sure what their price is for this brush. Um, the Chinese company that reached out to me, I told them they need to send me the brush first before we even talk any type of numbers because I'm not putting my name on any of this and it's not a good brush. So... But so far, it's turning out to be a great brush. Um, so we played around in not polish. Let's play around in my glitter acrylic mixes. So we're doing honeydew and northern lights. So let's see how. Um, the mat, I think, is 20 bucks on Amazon. I wonder do they sell these if I can get a better price <laughs> on the mat. I'm not trying to say that you can get everything from overseas, but you know. So here's Northern Lights. How much is it over there? On, um, she said Ebony Creations. No. Ebony. How much? Because ultimately, I'm sure everybody gets the same stuff from the same place or around the same place like with a different company But this is a good mat for you to practice. At least that's what they recommended while I was in. Um, what I recommended. What they recommended to me while I was in nail school. So. 
That's why I said I love this mat. It lets you practice. Shaping, cleaning up around the nail, and you can pop them off once they're dry. Oh, the mat was 15. Okay. So it looks like it picks up the glitter acrylic mixes very well. Like I said, I'm just doing some final touches here. Shaping. Before it completely dries. Yeah, of course. Look around, you know. Find, find the best products that works for you guys. Again, like I said, I am reviewing this brush to see if I want to purchase them, to add them to my website, to give to you guys. And I would definitely get the same size 14. Because uh, so. it seems like it's a, I don't know, it, it seems like this brush is actually smaller than my, um, like the bristles are smaller than the brush that I use already. But overall, it's a good brush. And size 14 isn't bad. You have definitely, it gives you definitely uh, some good control over picking up your acrylic beads. Just make sure you take care of your brushes. That's how you get the longevity of your brushes, is to take care of them. So the Northern Lights is pretty good. Let's do honeydew. Let's do a stiletto nail. Yes, it does look like a beginner brush. And I'm all for it. Because everybody's trying to learn how to do nails. Sorry, let me move this over some so you guys can see. But again, bead consistency is great. And obviously because you're working with a glitter, you will get some glitter left on your brush. But, I mean you have to start shaping your brush and remember to clean clean off your brush so it does look like a 9 or 10 but I use a 10 but again different brands of brushes um, have different sizes and especially not trying to say that this one uh, the company sent it to me from China so I mean you know every China has their own different sizes and what they think is a 14 versus what U.S. 14 is, you know? So, to me, it seems like this brush is a 10, though. So, the 14 may be a little reaching for it, but like I said, I use a 12 and a 10 and I have a 20 brush. I've never owned a 14 brush. Yeah, no, I told them not to uh, send me a crimped brush because some people don't like to work with crimped brushes. So you, I can crimp it on my own if I choose to. Because not all my brushes are crimped. And the benefit of not having it crimped is that you can actually get into 
these nice little small places on your nail, uh, actual nail. So to me, I don't like to work with crimp brushes as often because it makes for easy placement for the, the acrylic bead. So like I said, it's, it's all preference. Um, what you feel comfortable with working with. You know, anybody can get adjusted to working working with any size brush. It just takes practice. See, it fits. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it fits much better into the spot with the cuticle, which is why I don't like working with. I don't work. I'm not saying that I don't like working with them, but I don't work with them as often. So it fits well into the cuticle area to me and let's encapsulate so again it's it's all preference um so far it's not a lot of sh there is no shedding at all but again this is my first time using the brush so I have to use it more um, to be able to know if the brush shred, uh, sheds at all. But like I said, application is great. Using it with different kinds of acrylic powders is great. Uh, Rhonda says I never tried an uncrimped brush and this one does fit well around the cuticle. Yes, that's I was like it it works. That's why I said for it not to be crimped, it works because um hold on one second. So let me grab my brush, which is crimped. So you guys can see what I'm talking about. So here's my brush. My brush is crimped. I need to get the air out of it. You see, this is my crimp brush. Look how it doesn't fit inside of the nail cuticle area. Here, do it down here. See? I'm not trying to say that the average person's nail is like that. And look, my brush is shedding because I use it a lot. <laughs> so okay sure no problem so let me go back to the colored acrylic so that way you guys will be able to see it so i'm gonna grab this teal here so here we go one two three four see how my brush is more for a wide bed so that will work for here see the difference on my nails but if you had a client you wouldn't lay that acrylic bead. That's why I, I don't know if you guys notice that I lay my acrylic bead sideways on the nail. Because my brush is too wide. Um, the mat I had actually got when I was in nail school. But they were saying that you can find it on Amazon. But I was actually going to ask the company that's sending me this brush to see if they had any of any of the mats so you know and then now let's go ahead and use the new brush and now look look at how that bead lays right in the cuticle 
obviously you may have to do a little bit of cleanup because I still have some liquid in my brush but look at the difference so that's the difference from having a crimped brush and a not crimped brush so it just basically flattens out the bristles Let me grab the yellow. I'm gonna push this back. So let's go on the square. Let's go on the square tips. So let's do both brushes. So this is my crimp brush. There's the bead, but it's obviously wide. So, which is hence why you guys see me in most of my videos. I love this brush. Like, this is my go to brush, but I lay my brush sideways when I'm applying, when I'm using this brush, because it fits better into the cuticle wall. So, that's a trick um, that you can use, but you see the difference? Is because the brush is crimped. So now let's go over. Let's go over to the squared oval. And we're going to use the new brush that was sent to me. And we're going to go in this yellow. Sorry, tapped it a little too much gonna one two three get us a nice bead and we could place it right in the well of the cuticle because it's not crimped so we don't even have to worry about turning our brush sideways because it's not crimped having it crimped will flatten out the bristles So here we go again, I picked up a larger bead and even if I do pick up a larger bead, it's still able to fit inside the walls. But the brush is uh, giving me life here. So someone said, I think Ms. Nunu said, um, oh no, Natalie said it. No, Ms. Nunu did say it. Um, the paint, will the paint come off if it touches the monomer? Let's try it. I mean, I think that would be with any brush to be quite honest. But I'm dipping my hand, I'm dipping my finger into the monomer. I'm going to do my thumb, okay? Both my thumb and my finger. And I'm touching the brush. And yes, it does. See, the ink is actually coming off on my hand, but that's ink. So we want to see the wood handle. Because uh, now it's on. But that would be to, to be expected. As long as it doesn't eat into the the um, the wood, I'm perfectly fine with it disappearing. Because even on my Sophia Kalinske, because I use it and obviously I touch the I touch it, it should come off because it's ink. See? As long as it doesn't eat into my wood, I'm fine. And this is obviously I should have cleaned my brush a little bit better. So, that would be normal. So, I wouldn't mind that. But if it starts to eat into my brush, that's a problem. And the brush obviously does get a little sticky. But obviously, that should be to, to be expected because my other brush like this is sticky now. So, you just have to wash and clean them. 
So we, I will be observing that to see if it eats into my handle. So good tip. That's why I said let's try this brush out before I put, I put my name on this. Uh, Nally says I was just looking at, I was just looking on Amazon and I and I couldn't find the exact same one. Um, well, if you can't, don't worry. I'll have the company send me some to provide to you guys. Uh, Rhonda says, I wonder why they don't school us on the difference. You have shown you have shown me what I could never see before. Oh, no problem. We're all here to learn together. But that's why I say most of my, the only reason I crimp this brush is because the guy was like, oh, you should crimp it because your nail beds are wide. But it's not. And then honestly, um, also for any other clients, but you want to be observant of that especially when you're doing clients, um, take a look at their nail beds. You're supposed to do that anyway to know what size brush to use. Like I said, it works for me because I have wide nail beds. But if I get a client that has small nail beds, you should really be adjusting your brush. So. Uh, Miss Nuno said, that's what I meant, the wood part. As you know, I have a... I have a birthday I just bought, but when I touched it with the monitor, the painting words slid right into my hands. Yes. So the painting words are gone, but that's normal for any brush. I thought you meant does it automatically eat right into the wood. I'm like, I've never seen that before. And clearly, sometimes I use gloves, sometimes I don't. And I wanted to make sure it doesn't eat into the wood. So it does not. There is a brush on Amazon that looks just like it with different wording. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, maybe it is on Amazon. On eBay, too. Okay. This company reached out to me, sent me this brush in particular. Because, um, like I said, I really wasn't looking for a brush. That's why I said, as a nail tech, you always got to have backup brushes. So, I have, like, two of these as it is. So, and I have multiple brushes. I have my OPI brush, which is my uh, Golden Oval Kalinske brush. I have my Petite Fine Point brush, which I'm doing 3D flowers on. As a nail tape, you should have brushes galore. <laughs> so, but yeah. So, I mean, if it's a good price that I'm purchasing them for, definitely I'm going to sell them to you guys for a good price. But we shall see because I'm not done. I want to know how this works. So, we did the honeydew. That works great. Let me try this uh, D and D dip powder. Let's see how this works with monomer, and if it picks up. up wonderful okay let's grab this emerald green Still picks up wonderful so the consistency is great um yeah i've seen the same brush on amazon it's 15 dollars for three well send me the link so that way i know if this is the same brush i'll be like hey look i've never seen them offer 15 dollars for three brushes and they uh 100 kalinsky i've never seen that and i'm i stay on amazon so definitely send me the link to my uh, Instagram so I can see this. So yeah, it looks like these, these brushes or this brush 
works great. Three at a hundred percent, a hundred percent Kalinsky. Yeah, that's a question mark. Send me. Link. But yeah, um, definitely like this brush. I mean, I'm sure um, all companies have access to the same products, so who knows. So yeah, um, Bithy, would you mind doing a shaping video? Um, no problem. Shaping, um, as in applying nail tips and manually doing shaping. I have no problem with doing that. I can actually do it after this one. But so far, like I said, um, this brush seems to be great. I can't wait to use it some more. Um, obviously, make sure that you are wiping your brush and cleaning it. Even when I pressed it down, there is no shedding right now, that is. But again, this is the first time that I'm using it. So I like to shape it back in, in how it came. So yeah, rock with this brush for now. You know, first impression is definitely. Um, if they asked me to purchase this brush, would I purchase it? I sh probably would. Um, but again, I want to continue to test out the brush so videos to come after this one thank you guys for tuning in i am going to clean up and set up for the shaping video that ms nunu asked for and maybe we'll do a set um maybe we will do a set with this brush why not because we gotta use it right <laughs> um Rhonda says i keep my brushes in the tube they come in to protect it yes um, where did I put that little plastic tube? <laughs> so, yes, you can definitely put your brushes back in the plastic tube and that it comes in. Um, my brushes are out in the open um, as well because I like for them to air dry. You can put them in a, in a case, a traveling case, whatever works for you guys. So, yes, um... Would I recommend the brush for right now? My initial answer is yes, but I need to use it some more. So I'm going to clean up. I'm going to come back. Um, we're going to do a shaping video. And um, oh, no problem, Rhonda. Thanks for joining. Thank you all for joining. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe. Hit the notification bell to all. Um, all notifications so that way you know when I post. Um, so yeah, I'll be coming back shortly and we will do a shaping video. Um, yes, I can definitely, that's what my plan is. Once we do the shaping video, I would like to use this brush to do a set. So, um, yes, so, um, But yeah, so thank you guys for tuning in. Until next time, um, I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.